Ever since I was little, I always knew what a carbon footprint was. It was just something our generation grew up with. We knew what it meant, we knew that we had to cut down on our own carbon emissions in order for the atmosphere to be safer. It was just something we knew. Critics had argued it would be very difficult to do an experiment where the entirety of the world would cut down on their global emissions to see if this actually worked. Unfortunately, in the year 2020, we were given that opportunity. This is why it struck me as odd when a year later, the world citizens' carbon footprint and carbon emissions had decreased by 8%. This was a record drop we hadn't seen since the ending of World War II. And absolutely nothing changed. In fact, things got worse. All right. How did this happen? Isn't the entire point of a carbon footprint that if we cut down on it, it would make things better? My faith in something that I thought was relatively simple was shattered. And that was when I discovered that fixing the environment would be much more complicated than I thought it would be. Then I got angry. Who had done this? Who had fed me and my entire generation these lies that we grew up watching on, on Cartoon Network, on Nickelodeon, that if we just bought Dawn dish soap, or if we cut down on our carbon emissions, that the little geese in oil would be saved, or that the world would stop burning? Who told us that we needed to cut down on our carbon emissions? That's what my project set out to do. Let's start with this. What is your carbon footprint. Carbon footprint is an offshoot of the term ecological footprint, which was created by a Canadian ecologist, William Rees, in conjunction with a Swiss urban planner, Matthias Wackernagel. The EF, as Britannica affectionately calls it, was originally built to show a country's ecological footprint and also whether they were in an ecological debtor or not. Ecological debtors were poisoning not only their own ecosystem, but also the ecosystem of others. The difference here is that the carbon footprint actually focuses on an individual and their own ecological footprint versus a group or a country or the world, for instance. In order to calculate your own carbon footprint, you have to take into account the direct emissions from your partaking in goods or services. Manufacturing, heating, transportation, and electricity are all a part of this. Side note, the way you get this is by measuring the combustion of fossil fuels. It also takes into account the greenhouse gas emissions from your travel and other ventures. The interesting thing about the carbon footprint is that it only takes into account the consumption part of emissions, not the production part of emissions. This would completely skew all the factors that we thought we were dealing with in the first place. The very first publication of this phrase came from a BP ad titled, Carbon Footprint. What size is your carbon footprint? I'll let that sink in for a second. Yes, this is the same BP that was a part of the largest maritime oil spill in human history. This came after a BP rebranding in 2001 from British Petroleum to Beyond Petroleum, complete with a brand new shiny logo that was yellow and green with sunshine and dewdrops and a pledge to do better. Today, BP, Amoco, Arco, and Castro get together to try Beyond Petroleum, BP. Okay, so the origin of this word came from a company that was trying to save their image. Because in the late 90s, early 2000s, there was a resurgence of the way that people looked at brands and what those brands did and reacted to their environment. There was a rise in people looking at the brands that they used and seeing whether those brands aligned with their values or not. You might be confused, but companies playing to the other side happens way more often than you think it does. In fact, there's a strong history in terms of advertisement about this in the United States. And with that, I would like to bring your attention to the Keep America Beautiful ad that aired in 1971. This ad featured a Native American canoeing through a river of trash, and then he walked into a big city where trash was thrown on him out of someone's car, and then he cried. was actually played by an Italian. And some people don't. People start pollution. People can stop it. This ad won two Clio Awards for effective and efficient advertisement and was also hailed as something great by the ecological groups of the time. Its slogan, People Start Pollution, People Can Stop It, 
was championed by Coca-Cola and Pepsi, who paid for the ad. Yes, the same Coca-Cola and Pepsi who are responsible every year for metric tons of waste and ocean dumping. The BP ad for the carbon footprint actually won a golden Effie in 2003, which is the highest award an advertisement can win. The point of the ad is trying to convince the general public that the pollution the Earth experiences is the fault of the royal we. Whatever it is, the whole population of the world make that a very, very big number. Which is something that we have seen BP do even before the rebrand. To quote Mark Kaufman, the campaign impressed upon the American public that a different type of pollution, heat trapping carbon pollution, is also your problem, not the problem of companies drilling deep into the earth for and then selling carbonaceous fuels refined from ancient decomposed creatures. BP even released their carbon footprint calculator in 2004. They also later released an app called Vive for individuals to track their carbon emissions through their subsidiary launch pad. But once this was found out in like late 2018, it, it really, really didn't take off. Future editing Graham here. I also discovered that BP released its first ad in a decade in 2019 after the Deepwater Horizon oil spill, and they were absolutely destroyed because of the blatant hypocrisy. They were promoting new renewable sources of energy in their partners at Lighthouse, while also claiming that there would still be a need for over 1.4 million additional barrels of oil a year, when at the end of the day, they are still investing 97% of their funds into oil and natural gas, which is frankly just a bad look. So what's the lesson here? From 1990 to 2015, the world's top 10% have contributed 52% to carbon emissions. 10% of the world's citizens compared to the bottom 90% have over half of the carbon emissions in a 25 year period. This means that if the other 90% of the population were to dramatically lower their carbon footprint and carbon emissions by 8% or so, that the effects would be minimal. It would never be enough to counteract the top 10% of the population's carbon emissions. And that's using BP's structured carbon footprint, which we're not even sure is accurate in the first place. The overall message here is that the idea of the carbon footprint was actually created by the second largest private oil company in the world. They manipulated a scientific system in order to get the world off their backs for ruining our atmosphere. So, what can we do? The first thing is this. Even though the carbon footprint was created in ill faith, the actual premise isn't a bad thing. Attempting to cut down on your carbon emissions and live more sustainably is nothing to be ashamed about. In fact, it's something that I would recommend. But one thing I wanna make clear is that the guilt associated with not living this sustainable lifestyle is wrong. I think we should all do better, but I don't think that we should be shamed for it, especially given the information that we have uncovered. Again, this is future editing Graham popping on to say that there are countless reasons, social and economic, as to why people cannot participate in a more sustainable lifestyle. These reasons fall everywhere from the systematic oppression of minorities and forcing them into lower income lives to the burden of living sustainably in the era of capitalism. But those are videos and topics for a later day. Second, if you live in America or in a place that allows you to have an opinion, vote, voice your opinion, get with people of like-minded status who want to save the earth or vote for legislators who support your causes or who will champion bills and rights that will protect the place that we live on. Encourage your legislators to do their job and to support legislation that moves us forward, not backwards. Finally, never give up. We have one earth and it is our responsibility to protect it.